I've had a upper respiratory infection, so I haven't talked in a lot of my videos recently. I took a 13 inch silicone tray and I piped out with waterproof silicone caulk these little shapes. Let it dry overnight so it's like, you know, a silicone mold. It's like rubber. And then I poured in these and I'm trying to get that kind of dragon scale effect even though I like <coughs> I like what's going on on top. I'm hoping the underside will be really pretty but I don't know because I've never done it quite this way. But I wanted to show you what I had used. As always, I used Artist Resin Medium Viscosity by Counterculture. And then I used a little bit of Cast and Craft White in the white. And I put a little in with the pink Mica, which was Lollipop by Etsy Funshine Color Shop. The deepest color was the La Res blushing pink. It's a metallic pigment paste. Um, the tint where it didn't have any mica in it was a little bit of peach and a little bit of rose. These are resin dyes by Lemino. Lemino. The white, besides the cast and craft, I put in White Opal by Art Tree Creations. I don't remember where I got this, to be honest. Interference Red by Blingit, which is color art. And then finally the gold was Art Tree Creations. Rich Gold. I actually wanted a little bit brighter gold, but I think it's still going to work. And some Sparkle Miners Gold from Etsy Funshine Color Shop. So that's what I put in, and I put it in in layers, and then put a little clear in at the very end, which kind of gives it that depth and kind of makes things move. And I'm going to wait at least five hours, and that's why I show my timer. When I mix resin, it mi I mix it for six minutes, but then after I finish mixing, I start my timer from zero, and I'm up to 36 minutes now. So I'll wait till about five hours and I can probably then unmold these shapes and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next with that. I'm super excited to try it out and hopefully it works. So I will be back in probably about five hours. I'll let you know how long it is. Okay, so um, I used the silicone caulking on a silicone mat. This was a cheap one from Amazon for maybe $12 or $13. Well, it doesn't, it'll come off, but it's separating, but it's not separating from the mat. 
So I'm just going to have to leave this on and order another one. So I didn't know if that would be a problem or not, but that's okay. I'll make my own tray, or I also have this one, which is actually, I didn't do it in this one because this is the really expensive one that I used. So I may stick it in here. And I'm not sure what all I'm going to do. I'm going to let this cure, totally cure it. They're still just a bit tacky. That's why I've got gloves on. I was able to cut away some of the edges that were sticking out. But really all the crevices are going to be filled with something. So, and then these are still just a tiny bit flexible. I'm going to go ahead and unmold it just because I want to see. It was my leftover resin. Okay. So, that didn't do anything like I expected on that side, but it's pretty on this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on this silicone mat so that um, the bottoms don't get messed up. So this was purely an experiment. To try this out and um, I'm gonna do more with it so just stay tuned and I'll be back tomorrow after they're cured So I used facet resin. Excuse my voice, I still have an upper respiratory infection. Um, I used the facet, piped it in, and it's actually stain put, even though it's a little bit higher than the um, cured pieces here. It's not flowing over because it's the facet, and it was getting really hot in my hand. So I have some I'm not using that. I'm just going to leave. Um, <clears throat> so then I'm going to have to flood coat this and it is pretty much taller than the edge of the silicone mold. And because this resin sets up in 15 minutes, 
I'm able to kind of take my <coughs> take my uh, fingernail and go around the edge a little bit. I'm gonna let this sit for an hour or two and it'll be cured. <coughs> I can tape the edge to make a dam and then flood coat it and then make the edges gold. So this was a purely experimental thing and I wasn't sure how it's gonna turn out, but we'll see how it looks and I'll be adding handles when I put the flood coat in. Okay, so here is the individual pieces. They are inside the mold and I put the gold uh, resin that was a facet in between the pieces and it pretty much didn't move or go over the edges of the pieces like maybe a medium viscosity or something would. So here's the back of it, what it looks like. But I, what I'm going to do is build a dam around the edge with aluminum tape. So I'm going to first start with the piece and I want to make sure it's pretty flat. So I'm going to start with the piece that I feel like is fairly manageable. If you kind of crumple the edge, you can cut that part off too. Keep it as flat as possible. So I'm going to take it and it's very sticky. I'm going to take it and fold it. You want it in there fairly even. So I'm going to go about in the middle there. Get my finger out from here. And if it messes up, I can cut that off too. I'm not a good, I'm not an expert at this. I've only worked with it a few times and it's very sticky and so if you even have to work in sections. And then this is going to be taped to the edge. The shiny part, and I want it right on the edge. And then the sticky part will be sticking to the resin sides. And then I'm going to press it really nice and firm. So this will be my dam. So the resin is going to be up against the shiny part that's folded. Right here. I'll take a piece right where that seam is just go up and over so it's nice and tight we don't want any spillage I like to do most of my trays within a resin mold so when you unmold it it's just the height of the mold but this mold is not super deep <coughs> and I needed a little bit more depth to it because of the thickness of this and it went up over you know it's higher than the actual pieces so I need it deeper as far as the resin goes Okay, and then I'm just going to try to get it to stand up as straight as I can because this is a circle that's not perfection. I just want to try to prevent any leakage is the main thing where the little curves go in and out. And then it's ready to pour the resin in and then I'll wait probably about an hour to hour and a half and then I'll come back and put 
the brass handles into the resin which will secure it. You can also put a tiny bit of super glue or hot glue. So I think I'll just go ahead and put the handles on. And I'm just putting a dab. This just adds them standing roughly where I want them to be. So it's not, it's not real firm, um, but it's in the basic places that I want it to be, so I'll be back with that. Okay, so this one um, has been a unique experience because I've never done one quite like this. I did have that sticky tape, which was super tacky. I got off the, the sticky part on the back side just with some alcohol. And so where it was sticking, to the resin part you know I folded it down and the shiny side was against the resin so it didn't stick to the resin but it had some stickiness that has kind of stuck to here so um, I'm not sure I, I'm gonna paint the edges gold anyway I am gonna use a tool or you could use a little sander or whatever like a, a mini sander Dremel tool I've got this that I bought from a hardware store. It's metal. And what I'm going to do is, it's got, the edges are pretty sharp. They're raised just a little bit. I don't know if you can see. And I actually do like having a lip on the edges of my pieces sometimes. And I'm going to have that gold rim that is going to be uh, oil paint, but I like to go around and soften those edges so they're not sharp for any reason and I'm, I still like to have that lip so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to put my mask on and do this where it's in a good ventilated area. You don't want this getting to your eyes or nose so I'm going to do that part and I'll be, be right back.